All right, guys, welcome back to another Steam free to play walkthrough. Today we have Winter Warm Summer Grass. This story is a fictional, the story is fictional, and any resemblances to it, real or imagined people, places, or events are purely coincidental. Purely coincidental. Reading is hard, this is not starting well. It contains mild vi horror, violent sexual themes, and supernatural themes, and adult themes. Recommended for players age 15 plus, click to confirm. So this is supposed to be like a horror um japanese kind of visual novel japanese style visual novel there's supposed to be three endings we're gonna try to play through to get all the endings but no promises it seems like it's gonna be a lot of reading new game people whisper of a village do they now which is cursed by a mountain god Mountain God? Hype? Venture beyond the bustle of the city, through the remote forests and towering mountains, to where the rumbling and whistling of stream tra steam trains barely echo. Travel deeper on a past no lighter than an animal trail, past where even monks would turn back. Then further still, there embedded in the heart of the mountain lies a village. All who see this isolated hive of human life, cupped on a si all sides by sheer rock and dense forest, are stunned by its beauty. Wow. Its streets are gilt with verdant greenery, so vibrant it gleams, and, an, and a cornucopia of lush flowers in bloom. And spring cherry blossoms Trees decorate the village like a parade of girls in their finest dresses treading on soft green carpet. On summer mornings, leafy ivory creepers. They're safe. Ivory creepers draping from the eaves of every house rustle among tinkling, dew-dappled glass wind chimes. Everyone delights in watching deer horn cactus unfurl the milky white flowers over the course of a, si a single night. I don't know what any, what a cactus do deer mountain cactus is. In fall, the sky stretches higher than ever, filled with leaves and bright and oh, as bright as licking flames. Every licking flames, every hour appears as if it were red, the we're red dusk. Reading is so hard right now. Why am I struggling so bad? Help me. Even in winter, when the village is silenced by snowfall, the sweet fragrance of pur pale purple wisteria, fl wisteria flowers, that's from Kamatsu no Yaiba, blossoming out of season, perfum perfumes the air. Ort. No one fails to be astonished by the village's bounty of nat natural beauty. All sing its praises. And yet, all those who visit try not to try to never linger too long. They know the village is a place of grave and sinister misfortune. How so, you may ask? Because its inhabitants suffer from a strange and rare disease. Each and every one of them. God bless us, each and every one. As winter turns to spring, their symptoms appear in droves. How oh, the Grinch stole Christmas. The people of the village bloom just the same as their surroundings, as if they were themselves a part of the mountains. Sprouts and stems spill from their eyes, the top of their heads and their pores. Ivy bursts forth from their body. Vines creep from their skin. Petals surge from their mouths with every cough. Interesting. Spring wildflowers and mosses, which ought to rise only from the ground, erupt from their skin as well. The great mistletoe has come. Not the great mistletoe. <laughs> so, <laughs> terrifying. Though the village have their own name for the awful phenomenon, outsiders know it as the flora calamity. Legend has it the disease is a result of the villagers having once invoked the wrath of the mountain god. Mountain god? Hype? Its rate of onset varies, but when a victim's body is entirely covered by plants, they perish, becoming one with the mountains. The villagers believe that the affliction is a reminder from the vengeful god that they must suffer to atone for their ancestors' transgressions. 
Believing the God will forgive them one day. They embrace an industrious and aesthetically modern way of life, resigned to their harsh reality. There is another God. He is not the mountain God. He is the weirdo God that we don't know. As it happens, the village is home to a God of its own, too. I thought the mountain God was its God. The deity exists not encapsulated in stone, nor a painting. He can be seen and even touched. They call him. Tarahito Gami. Arhito Gami. Super Comedy Guru. Oh, that's weird animation right there. That's so strange. A young man of singular beauty and the only person in the village from whom not even one bud has ever grown. How long has he lived here? Why did he come? Who am I? In truth, he is probably no more than a lost child who once strayed into the village by chance. That matters not to the villagers. To them, Arahito Gami appears to have been pardoned by the mountain god. He is free. Proof that a day will come that they will, when they too will be saved. False. Fake news. Y'all are screwed. The mountain god is pissed. Oh, she a flower girl. Right in the eyeball. There are more today. Owie stared drearily in there to the lacquered mirror her mother had given her. It had become her morning routine ever since the great mistletoe had come to her. The great fucking mistletoe dog. She heaved a deep sigh, <sighs> releasing all the hopes that had stirred in her during the night. Nazuna. I might not last long enough. Nazuna! Kirito! <laughs> the rumbling of a departure, departing team train echoed in her memories. Allie, make sure I, you hold on until I become a doctor, okay? Her childhood friend, Nazuna's soft voice, had nearly drowned out by the screech of a whistle warning the train was about to leave. Nazuna got the heck out of here, dog! Allie wondered what expression he wore then after he turned away. It was like, I'm out! Good luck. Peace. She hadn't meant to recall that moment. She seemed to be growing more sentimental with each passing day. Uh. Her hand wandered to the newer, unmentionable buzz sprouting from her eye. The flash of pain jolted her when she tweaked the stems, pulling the membrane of her eye taut. That sounds so painful. Ow. It was only natural that it hurt. Hell yeah, it hurt. After all, the plants were growing out of her face. There was no hiding from the fact that the cursed weeds had sprung from her. She resumed gazing vacantly into the mirror when her eyes picked, pricked at the muffled voices of maze beyond her door. Hmm? It sounded like they were murmuring about her as they went about their morning duties. Don't you murmur about me. I wonder if Miss Ollie will be all right. I know what you mean. I've never seen anyone inflect as early as her. This household gets bad, don't it? No, don't jinx us. You'll tip the great mistletoe. Miss Ollie's not the not the only one who gets it. I know. Still, isn't it too soon for her? The master was cursed early too. People in this family die young. You know better that better than anyone. He and the madam have been visiting the shrine lately. I'm sure they're asking about the closed ritual. True. With that and the force just around the corner, there's hope. I know much about the closed ritual, but it works, doesn't it? I've heard it's been like a pre-wedding ceremony. I hate to say it, but maybe heaven's just set on her. You've been chosen. By the mountain god! Heaven said on me. Ali peered at her reflection, letting the voices wash over her. These buds are set on me. What did I just do? Go back. One weed stuck out further than the others. A healthy pea green sprout. Well, at least you got peas growing out of your face. That's nice. 
Dot, dot, dot. Ali tentatively pitched his stem. Don't pull it out, please. A rush of pain when she tugged on the smooth, supple plant assured her that it is, was indeed growing out of her. Stop pulling on it. Why? Why me? Why was Ali who she was? Why did she have to be born in this village into her family? Oh. The mirror slid out of her grip and landed on the floor with a thud. Oh. Oh, are you awake, Miss Ali? Yes. Ah, oh, good. Well, then come out for breakfast. Er, yes, we've seasoned mountain vegetables with fresh picked herbs. You'll like them. Okay, sounds nice. How many meals do I have left? Huh. Can I get you seeding the plants that grow out of me? That's, uh, weird. I would not. It would be nice if doing that would cut the curse off at its root. So to speak, turn it back into her body. Ah, how silly. What if that is the answer? There's no point in being ridiculous. No one would do such a thing. Her meandering thoughts brought a smile to her lips. Even if she did eat what grew from her, new foliage would spring forth in its place. It preyed on her flesh and blood. No one can escape the great mistletoe. Curse had just come to her a little early. The maids were right. Allie's fate was sealed the moment she was born into the, this village. Chosen. The great mistletoe has chosen you. Come on, faster. Allie dashed up a gravel path without a thought for how carefully her mother had dressed her. It'll be okay. I'm only a little late. A pretty, pretty rarely worn kimono, which she had been showed off to all the adults at home, was creased and bunched. What mattered more to her was the festival to, was due to start at any moment. She promised Nazana that she'd rendezvous with him in secret before it began. You won't mind too much. You'll still be waiting for me, sure, surely. Finally, the dense corpse of, copse of trees surrounding the shrine came into view. Ali raced up stone steps through a teeming mass of people. Birds seemed to burst out of the ground on either side of the path as they took flight. Nazna stood beneath the shrine's large wooden gate, looking impatient. Ali slowed. Hello. You're late. You are late. Sorry, it took me a while to get away. I thought you might have forgotten about me. Don't say that. I would never. Well, you're here now. Come on, before Father or anyone else sees us. What are y'all doing? Okay. Sounds nefarious. Hey, what's our Hito Gami like? Well, I still haven't talked to him, so I really don't know. What do you mean? Don't you have to serve him too, living here? Nazna blushed at Ali's disappointed sigh. That's... I'm still just watching and learning. Yeah, yeah. They successfully managed to slip away from the crowd. Now all that was left was to get a wait for a glimpse of our Hitogami. They held their breath, but like most kids, they struggled to stay silent. It didn't take long for Ali to grow restless. Nerves and anticipation got the better of her. How much longer, Nazana? How would I know? <laughs> what a good are you then? I'm the one who brought you this far. Yeah, well... You really are too cute, you know. I wouldn't want to be called cute by you anyways. I got him. Seriously, you are not cute. Ha 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 ha. Stop it. Ali let out a shrill giggle. Nazna was the only one, one who was cute whenever he got mad just then. What's a shrill giggle? <laughs> something like that. Oh, he felt something on her arm. She looked down to check if there were a bug crawling on her. Whoa, it's a hand! What she saw made her breath catch in her throat. A vine. I always heart pounded. Why would a vine be sprouting from her already? The curse sent by the great mistletoe, the fruit of the god's anger, afflicted adults. It would come to her eventually, but not yet. She was far too young. Oh no. What's wrong? Allie impulsively shook her arm. The vine 
Bud whipped back and forth and came off and landed on the ground. Ah, thank goodness, it must have fallen on me. It could have been growing out of me. If it had broken off just now, it would have hurt more. What happened? Allie cast a sidelong glance at the tiny green trindle lying on the dirt, then looked up at Azuna. He stared back at her, looking at as baffled as she felt. Nothing, never mind. You sure? Allie felt like something bad would happen if she told him. She kept her face blank and shook her head. You're being weird, oh. What? There he is. Where? Allie followed Nazana's line of sight to the top of the Shrine Outdoor Cypress stage. She was about to ask Nana, Nazana to point him out when her eyes fell on him. He's oddly animated and creepy looking. You are one creepy boy. Look at him move around. That's scary as hell. What's up, homie? He was looking right back at her. Why is he looking over here? Ah, uh, now we can save. Save. Oh, wait. Oh, wait, what was it before that? Natsuna had promised that no one would ever expect to spot anyone where they were hiding. Our Hitogami was definitely looking their way. Quick save. Aoi was transfixed by his eyes. They held the same color as the forest fresh greenery and were changing with the light just like the mountainside did. Wow. Wow. What should we do? If he tells someone that we sneaked in here, we're going to get in trouble. No one aside from certain shine staff were permitted to come this close to our Hitogami. Nazna might be let off since his father was the head priest, but if word got out that Aoi had embarrassed her family this way, she'd get a good scolding. She had to leave and fast, but despite the urgency, she couldn't tear her eyes away from Arihitogami. He's so pretty. His ebony hair was tinged blue. His skin was enticingly pale. His lips were plump and smooth as dewy, fresh fruit, and his color changing fairy tale eyes. So, so, so pretty. Oh, he's wiggling again. Man so beautiful that he'd earned the mountain's god's favor was just a few dozen steps away. Oftentimes, hearsay tends to build up people's hopes, only for reality to bring them crashing down. Even the sheltered young Aoi knew that. But the blessed Arahitagami's incandescence blew all over her, all of her expectations away. He had to be a living god. Aoi couldn't reconcile the ardency of her emotions with him possibly being anything less. Arahitagami dot 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 dot. Quick save. He dot dot dotted at me. Did he say something just now? She'd gotten lost in her own world while gazing at him. His moving lips broke the spell. She and Asuna were too far away for his voice to reach. What did he say? What did he say just now? I don't know. Ah. The moment she met Arahitogami's eyes again, the twinge in her forearm returned. It's back. The vine which she severed earlier had sprouted anew and was recoiling around her wrist. For some reason, the sight of it didn't scare her anymore. Weird. Aoi's daydream faded as quickly as it had come over her. Being afflicted, her memories often blurred with the here and now. Warm dusk light poured through the do oh, paper doors, dimly illuminating her room. What an old recollec recollection to have gotten lost in. Her first festival, the only time she's seen our Hitogami. Did our eyes really meet that day? Allie's memories assured her they had, but her logic dimmered. In all the times that she'd gone back to the shrine since, she'd never seen him again. Hmm. I can't see very clearly today. It was harder than usual to see out of her right eye. Not a good sign. There are even more shoots growing this evening. 
How much longer would the rest of her body remain unsullied? Allie pondered as she gazed emptily up at the ceiling. They always flourish the most when festival time comes around. Soon it would be the anniversary of the day she got to her first festival when she first gotten to see our Hitogami. Her future had been so bright. How long will I have left after the festival? Festivities were due to commence the day after next. While her body and soul were being slowly consumed in line with the village's bitter destiny. Why me? Why was a great mistletoe progressing in her with such ferocity? I can't be intimidated by something called the great mistletoe. Neither mom nor dad had it this badly when they were my age. It's because you saw the R. He took me. Something bothered her more than that, however. I haven't heard word from Nazna. He was in the city studying medicine. Wish I was there, too. Aoi gently brushed the plants that were obscuring her vision. They were plainly a mark of the god's rage, pissed. Why? She knew it was simply her lot in life. She understood that. She did. Still. I... Babe. I don't want to be returned to the mountains. Allie bit back another sigh. I'm scared. She loathed her situation. She wasn't ready to die yet. There was so much she still wanted to do, and she still had a promise to keep. The sound of the train's whistle echoed in her mind. She saw Nazanov's profile growing smaller on the train whenever she closed her eyes. That was the moment she realized he'd grown up, and her heart had swelled with embarrassment, sorrow, and an indefinable emotion. Ugh. Ugh. I don't want to die. Not yet. All the fear and unease she kept buried rose up inside of her, threatening to strangle her. Too bad. We're chosen. Just a few more days until the full moon. Everyone's eager to see you dance again. Especially those whose households have been visited by the great mistletoe this year. Dot, 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 dot. You look nervous. I apologize. I'm just looking forward to it, Arigito Gami. Are you? Be a shame if you were stricken in spite of your lineage. Lineage. He seems evil. Does something bother you, Arigito Gami? For some reason, the breeze is fragrant. I see. Maybe this will be the year. For what? Hodaka, go fetch the head priest. Oh, okay. Okay. A rare smile broke across Allie's face as she listened to her parents' peculiar pr proposition. You want me to? Yes, the head priest himself appealed to Arahito Gami. That's right, asking him to give you some of his medicine a special, as a special case. So I'll get medicine? Medicine was usually handed out at the end of the festival near the sacred tree. Because it was made by the blessed Arahito Gami, it was a renowned panacea. I don't know what that is, panacea. There were many who were waiting for it. Aoi had never been heard of anyone being allowed to skip the queue. Yes, it's a relief. The great mistletoe came to you so soon. We've been beside ourselves worrying. Truly, we're lucky our Hitogami chose us to use his discretion. Others beside Aoi were also counting the days until they die. She felt a pang of guilt over being made an exception at their expense, but... Could it cure me? Perhaps at the very least it could slow the great mistletoe and suck in her. Maybe she too could live a normal life. Her hand strayed to her bandaged eyes, hope swelled in her chest. Her right eye felt so curiously unlike the rest of her. Yes, it is. It's the great mistletoe. This is kind of nerve wracking. Allie followed her mother up the narrow stone steps to the shrine. 
faint trickling of water and chirping, chirping of insects filtered through the sacred grave grove surrounding them. The following two days during the festival was the only time during the year where vegetables, villagers, <laughs> vegetables, could stroll freely about, about the grove. For some reason, simply being there alleviated pain wrought by the great mistletoe. Was the shrine divine or the floor sympathetic? I feel like I'm healing already, just being by being amongst these trees. Calmness read through Alley. A sense of being charmed, even. Hmm. They pass beneath the twi towering shrine gate on clear days. Cypress stage visible some way away was strange. Cypress stage visible some way away was always drenched in sunlight. As it had been when Aoi saw Arhitagami that one time, she kept her eyes on it as she and her mother were led into the inner part of the estate. The man guiding them gave some sort of signal and set a set of huge doors creaked open. Da -da 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 a large complex of buildings lay before them, revered by the villagers as a great a site of great importance. Aoi knew it foremost as Nazana's home. She come here countless times before, counting during the daytime, but it looked very different at night. Another attendant shuffled towards them. Miss Sally must go alone from here on. Oh, okay. Allie? Yes? Her mother's tone was unexpectedly pressing. Hearing the strain in her voice, Allie could picture her face, even without being able to clearly see it in the dark. Close your eyes and don't make a sound. Close your eyes, block your ears, don't make a sound. So long as you do that, it'll be morning before you know it. Or is she going? This better not be some rape shit. I'm not ready for that. I will, Mom. The heavy doors creaked again as they closed behind Allie's mother. The last Allie saw of her was her back as she turned and was swallowed by the night. It's so quiet. The footman led Allie through the living quarters, then drove a, down a passageway. There ought to have been many attendants serving in this wing, but it was all silent. Allie followed the footman's back, relying on the wavering lantern, light of the lantern he held to guide her footsteps. The passageway was so narrow that it would be hard to turn around in, even traveling in single file. It branched into corridor after corridor, but there were still no traces of anyone else anywhere. A staircase here? I can't see how far down it goes. The footman gestured, bidding her to go down. Them. Bidding her to go down them. Wooden boards squeaked underfoot as she obeyed. Hmm? Something smells sweet. I know there's sip somewhere. Or he took on me. Allie felt as if it, she were descending into an abyss. Finally, the long staircase ended amid a haze of syrupy, rich perfume. Perfume. Oh. Is there someone here? Allie could no longer sense the footman accompanying her. Just then. What? Someone grabbed her arms and wrenched them behind her. Uh, ow! Behavior. This is all to help you. A familiar male voice muttered right next to her ear. Why? Ah. The man blindfolded Allie and bound her arms with a sinister practice speed. The moment she opened her mouth to protest, a gag was stuffed, in, stuffed into it. Uh, uh. Apprehension made her pulse boom faster until it felt like her heart would stop. Uh, Callous hands were dragging her somewhere. She heard a swish and a clattering like a door was hauled open before she was shoved into a cramped space. Her arms were so unnaturally positioned that she lost her balance and toppled onto her side. Ow! The smell of fresh and family mats hit her as her face scraped the floor. With some jostling, she managed to loosen her blindfold. It was still too dark to see. I've got to escape. 
wait here for the time being. The man who dragged her in, in closed the doors behind him as he left, leaving her alone in oppressive darkness. The pitch blackness weighed crushingly on her as she fought to understand what was going on. She wriggled around, trying to gauge her surroundings. Her whole body quaked with fear. She had no idea what was in store for her. A light. Is there something through there? A dim glow spilled through the crack between two sliding doors. There was another room next to the one she was in. Oof. Crawling on her belly like a caterpillar, Allie struggled over to the source of light. Mm -hmm. It drained her to contort with her arms bound and mouth covered. Her breath breathing turned ragged and her a buzz blared in her ears. Ah. By the time she reached the crack, friction burns from the tatami mats tingled on her shoulders and feet. Though the sounds she heard were faint, she ascertained there were the voices of one or more people on the other side of the doors. Who's in there? She put her good eye in the crevice and peered into the room beyond. Uh oh. Shadows on the opposite wall danced in orange light emitted by a candelabra. There were two, no, three people, perhaps. What are they doing? Oh. Ah. Oh, Hitogami. I would choke back a gasp. Oh, he looked at me. And that instant, the living god's eyes met her. His irises were just as I would remember them, like a burst of wildflowers on fresh mountain grass. Their colors fluctuated constantly in the changing light. Somehow, just like the last time she'd seen him, he appeared to be looking over at her. Is this a dream? Mere inches was away was a man as beautiful as he, his arms bound like hers with cord as red as blood. Smooth pale skin protruded from his half-fallen kimono. Gleaming where caught the flickering candlelight. His lithe body, said to be divine, was so flawless that every inch of it defied reality. Aoi's terror dissolved at first sight. She couldn't tear her eyes away. Man stood behind Arahitogami, scrunching thick fingers in his silky hair. Arahitogami flinched and didn't resume his indifferent gaze towards Aoi. He's alive. He's real. Huh. Hmm. Getting. Oh, they are raping him. That's awful. The older man's animalistic groan hung heavy in the human air. Archihito Gami's elongated neck was stained yellow by the light, like a delicate porcelain va vase. A drop of sweat fall f fell from his chin and shattered on the floor like a jewel. The pungent smell of flowers grew stronger. Ah. Uh. Aoi's heart clenched at the sight of Arahitogami's detached yet forlorn expression. She definitely should not be watching this. But though she knew that full well, she was hypnotized by his elegance, drawn like a moth to a flame. Mm. A moan as soft as a sigh escaped Arahitogami's lips, which were as swollen as fruit ripe to bursting point. Aoi's mouth watered at his forbearance. At his every movement, which betrayed how he was enduring what was being done to him. She gulped. Come over here. Yes, sir. Dun, dun, dun. I recognize that voice. It belonged to the servant who brought her to the stairway. Argy Togami tore his gaze away from the door alley was behind, his expression still blank. Like he was trying his hardest to ignore the deplorable position he was in. Ugh. It's too bright. The door in the front of Allie had slid open. She squinted. Mm -hmm. Let me go. Before her eyes could adjust the light, someone yanked her to her feet. She cowered as she was dragged over to Nazna's father, the head priest. The man who tugged on her released her arm and moved to stand behind him. Is that Nazna's older brother? It was. It was Sudoku. As always, he resembled Nazna a lot, but for his icicle hair. Ugh. 
We're giving you blood from our Hitogami's wounds. Aoi frowned at having been treated so vilely, demanding answers. The head priest paid her wordless objections no mind. Instead, he recited an incantation, a red chalice glinting in his hands. Drink you all for this, for it is. G the gag that had been stuffed in Allie's mouth was pulled out. Finally free of it, she coughed and sucked in several deep breaths. A trail of saliva tickled her chin, while nausea grated, while nausea grated her stomach. Uh. Why are they doing this? Arahitogami appeared behind them, crossing his arms nonchalantly as he took in the debased seat. Another attendant was reverently sedating his kimono, concealing his lustrous skin. No! Alex's face burned with mortification at being seen in such a compromised state. L let go of me! Hold her head! Yes, sir. D don't stop. We're doing this for you, Owie. You're receiving special treatment only a fool would struggle. What are you talking about? Are you still too much of a child to understand? Ah. Madoka grabbed Owie's ha hair and wrenched her jar open. So roughly she thought it might dislocate. Stop, don't. So, uh, what is that? Something was poured into her mouth as if it's a stifle. Any further cries? Oh, she's crying. I hope that's what that is. It's kind of the pervasive smell of wildflowers and fresh grass filled with her nostrils. The lixture flooded her throat and she swallowed to keep from choking. It made her splutter and she coughed most of it back up. Regardless of the circumstances, she couldn't keep the potion down. Give me the liniment instead. Yes, sir. The head priest scooped a handful of slimy poultice from a lacquer bowl, slathered it on Allie's eye. It smelled like dirt, like mountain earth. This will arrest a great mistletoe in you. Allie shuddered. Her skin crawled, urging her to resist the head priest who had kept relentlessly applying more of the sticky ooze. What is it, Arahitogami? Arahitogami? What? He sidled in front of her, casting a shadow over her face before tilting her chin upward. It's him! It's Arahitogami! His stare seemed a void of life as it bore down on her. Owie. Yes? She was too lost in his eyes to wonder why her name had graced those lips of his. Are you scared? He spoke so solemnly he could have been proposing double suicide. Of all people, Arahitagami was speaking to her. Owie knew she had to answer, but she was so overwhelmed that it all she could say do to stay all bright. Oh, Itagami placed a cool hand over her face, blocking her vision. Ah. Uh, I'm scared. It's okay. You're okay now. Why, why are you... His palm was soft and cool, and it was fragrant as a bouquet. The flask of alley strength drained away. Sleep. Sleep. What is this? Dot, 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 dot. Lured by his invitation to relax, she sank into darkness. Ugh. It's so bright. Allie blinked her eyes open, squinting in the dazzling morning light. Ah. Uh sat up as slowly, feeling like her, she was moving through triacle, her arms ached. Why? Oh, right. The delusion memories from the night before rushed into her mind. Going down lantern lit corridors, then being confined in the cell-like room, having her arms wrenched and twisted, 
lying on the totality mats, peeking into that room. And seeing that beautiful divine body restrained with blood red rope. Remembering the illicit moment she spied, Allie gulped. Just as she had when she'd seen it. She blushed recalling the human map must that had been redolent in the room. What did they do to me? She hadn't a clue how she'd gotten into this clean guest room. Did they give her medicine or not? Close your eyes and block your ears and don't make a sound. Well, we failed at that part. We made all kinds of sounds. Did mom and did mom and dad knew what was going to happen? Know what was going to happen? What she's seen and whatever was done to her. Did the grassy smell in that room come from the medicine? Ugh. Don't remember. Stop thinking. I always shook her head in a desperate attempt to erase the awful memories. She cast off her blanket and rose from the futon in which she'd awaken. Awoken. Oh. What's the smell? A full body scent of rose from the blanket as she smoothed it. Smoothed it. Let me see that again. Log. Full body scent as she smoothed it. Yeah, okay, I was right. It reminded her of fallen autumn leaves. Perhaps it was traces of the poultice that had been applied to her. It's nice. Its relaxing, nostalgic perfume let her lingering apprehension subside. I suppose Arahito Gami brewed that co concoction. Nazna once told Aoi that information contained in the city libraries were ne was next to nothing compared to cultural knowledge about natural remedies. Aoi leaned down and breathed in the leafy, leafy scent. Ah. Her mind sharpened as she exhaled. She washed her face at a portable basin and got dressed. Hmm. Doesn't look like there's anyone around. It was still early. The hallway outside of her room door was empty in both directions. Nothing seemed to suggest that anyone was up, else was up. What should I do, Dave? Leave the room. No one had given Owie Ow explicit permission to go wandering about as she pleased, but... I'll go for a walk. If by some chance anyone were awake, they'd be busy preparing for the festival. No one would notice her. She trod softly as she slipped out of the room, beckoned by the cool dawn breeze. While she's doing that, dot 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 dot, we'll go. It's so peaceful. Get some water. Judging from the pallid grace of the sky, the day had only just broken. Allie placed her hand on the pillar to lean over the veranda ledge and look at the sky. Her palm touched something soft. Hmm? Oh, it's these vines. Olive green creepers with red leaves embrace the red pillars, arc 
arcing upward to the sky everywhere she looked. Their lantern vines, they crept from innum innumerable pots scattered throughout the garden. Reported by post, they climbed as high as the, er, the eaves of each building. The alley their Carl color is Carl. Carl, the alley their color heralded the early summer and the beginning of the festival. Considering it started today, it was only natural that the shrine gods were washed with the vines. Villagers said that vines which our Hitogami tended grew better than anyone, uh, any other in the village. They were of such high quality that traders came all the way from the city to purchase stock from the shrine. At those times, the usually quiet village thronged with life, same as it would later that day. Come to think of it, this will be the first year. The first year that Aoi would attend a festival without without Nazna by her side. Ah, huh, how strange. He's all I think of lately. She never thought of him as often when she he'd still been with her all the time. Make sure you hold on. For what? His parting words echoed in her head as she tore her her eyes away from the bright red vines. What are we holding on to? I guess life. Allie walked through a courtyard in front of her room, there, then down a corridor with high walls. She came to a veranda, which connected the main living quarters to another wing. It's so cool here. The leaves must act like a reed screen blocking the heat. Walls of plants covered all vertical surfaces, posts, pillars, and walls. A morning draft carried through a dark room blew around her ankles. It felt like dawn manifest. The cicadas are stirring. It felt like the summer itself was waking up. Oh, what's up? Oh! Aoi hadn't sensed anyone around, but sure enough, someone was. Reclining casually against the post with his eyes closed was... Arahitogami! You, what are you doing here, Dylan? Ah! Madoka's curt chiding snapped Aoi out of her amazement. Dropped to her knees to apologize, flustered by his churlishness. I was staring so brazenly. And not just then, she stared last night too. No! Stop, don't remember it. She tried to forget the sights, the sounds, and the scents of those dimly lit rooms. Her eyes were glued to the ground, but she could still make out our Hitogami's kimono in her periphery. Lift your head. Oh. Oh, okay. She obediently raised her line of sight to his chest. I said, lift your head. Why? Aoi had braced herself to be reprimanded, but our Itogami's smooth, clear voice was calm. Look at me. Though he had no accent, his tone held an unbanged sophistication without a hint of anger, in fact, no undertone at all. Perplexed, Aoi timidly met his eyes at last. Yes, sir, I'm... I'm sorry. Good morning. Did you sleep well? Pardon? A no mask. That was his blank face reminded her of. A no theater mask. The comparison struck her out of nowhere. Despite being just a few feet away, his elegance made him seem otherworldly. His beauty far transcended that of troubadours, who came infrequently to the village to perform. It was plain to see that he would remain as stunning whether he was smiling, sad, angry, or lacking any expression as at present. Come with me. I want to talk to you. What? But, but I... 
Madoka, da 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 da. Arahito Gami's unexpected request rooted Aoi to the spot. Out of the corner of her eye, she was puzzled. Frown Mar, Madoka's face behind him. Save. Save. Speak with Arahito Gami. As you wish. Good. I knew you felt the same way. Pardon? Corner of Arhitogami's lips curled upwards, cracking his mask at last. This way. How he strands. Oh, excuse me. How he stared, entranced by his new expression, her cheeks flushed with heat. S sure. He moved so gracefully as he led her that it almost seemed like he was floating above the ground. Aoi followed unsteadily, feeling Hadoka's glare boring into her back. Interesting. Very interesting. Demon mask, Oni mask. And that's no mask right there, I believe. Aoi's nervousness only caught as she looked around our Hitogami's neat room, filled with furniture unlike any style she's seen before. Sliding doors led, leading to the veranda were set with red, blue, and green stained glass. Light reflecting, refracting through them, painted colorful murals on the tatami floor. The breeze was cooler than at Aoi's house and perpetually rustled the mini lantern vines lining the courtyard outside. The mask, she was startled to see no mask covering the wall. They swayed a little with each puff of breeze. It was like her earlier thoughts had been conjured into existence. It's like I'm in the clutches of a shape shape shifting trickster fox. Once long ago, Aoi had heard a mildly scary legend about such magical beast in a show put on by traveling performers. Up on me. It's been so long. Pardon? Arhitagami pressed his lips together for a moment, as if to keep from grinning. His eyes narrowed. You don't remember me? He cocked an eyebrow and tilted his head, then held out of his hand flat and waist sight. He can possibly mean... Since you are about this tall. That tall. No way. You came to see me. So I didn't imagine our eyes meeting? Changing with the light, holding colors of all four seasons, the eyes she'd seen so often in her dreams were the same up close. But faced with the real thing, she couldn't bring herself to look straight at them. You, um, remember graciously meeting my stare? How could I forget? Uh, thank you. He didn't look a day older, nor any less captivating. His beauty was unchanged. What on earth was he? A god? A saintly spirit? Maybe Buddha had looked as ethereal as Arhitagami was. That's why people were compelled to worship him. Who could help but be moved by his beauty? Aoi. Yes? Yes? His enunciation was as crisp as if he were biting each each syllable. His voice was as crystalline now as when he'd said her name the night before. How he had replied by reflex, lost in its resonance. I've been waiting for the day we'd meet again. Have you? Meet me? He's been waiting? She couldn't begin to imagine why he'd say such a thing. Before she could gather her thoughts, Arhita Gami drew closer and cusp cupped her cheek in his palm. Or did you forget about me? The fragrance she smelled when she woke and emanated from his palm. The rich earthy scent of fallen leaves. Each moment after she bumped into bumped into him outside had seemed surreal and remained so now. Everything felt like a fantasy, so she accepted his touch without a second thought. Uh, I'm sorry. 
His prismatic eyes drinking her in stole Allie's breath away. They look like illusions swallowing and altering the world around them. It's all right. I forgive you since you're here now. He released her with a faint smile. Owie felt a twinge of regret as distance distilled his musk. Why did he let her go? What was happening? Arahitagami. Shyness suddenly overcame her and her eyes wandered, searching for a place to safely settle. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. Her gaze chanced on the hollow eyes of the mask hanging on the wall. Despite their emptiness, it felt as if they were watching her. Oh, do you like them? People say they remind them of me. That's like I was thinking. Arahitagami took one up and held it up, partly covering his face like a cloud drifting over the moon. That's creepy. Ali could have sworn the room dimmed in response. What do you think? Powered light shimmered vividly on his white kimono. Like a red crown crane dancing in a force swaying of leaves. Force of swaying leaves. This feels like a dream. Did he breathe life into the mask? Was he truly a shape-shifting trickster? Everyone who comes into this room probably feels this disoriented. Like they've been drawn into a land between this world and another. Tell me, Aoi, what do you do for fun? Do you like badminton? Badminton? Mm-hmm. Do you did you know shuttlecocks look just like Buckley uh like Leota? What the like there's Excuse me. Like their seed pods? Do you know that plant? No. N no? Me neither. Oh, okay. I'll point it out next time we come across one. Sh sure. Great. Also, Arhitagami flitted to the next topic without pausing for breath. I'd like to know which color you think is the finest. Which? Color? I'd like you to tell me. He was like a rambling child, unable to rein in his slew of questions. I want to know what you think. I want to know about you, directly from you, from your mouth. Which color? The color she considered the finest. Uh-huh, the first one that pops into your head. What springs to mind? The color that came to her mind instantly was... Save? That's the color. The rosy color of sunset. The first color that shot to her mind was the rosy apricot hue of dusk. Rosy orange. Orange? Oh, I'm sorry, I was just remembering the festival last year. The festival? Why? Allie had blurted it out without thinking. Yeah, why? What she pictured was a pinkish tinge of Nazna's flushed cheeks. She surprised herself, undone by Arahitogami's relentless, relentless gaze, she looked away. When all was said and done... Oh, I mustn't look away. His rainbow eyes, the colors of speckled Portuguese glass, urged her to continue. Aoi had always gone to the festival with her best friend. The lantern lines on the shrine grounds that year were more vibrant than ever. Nasna's cheeks and the glow of the sunset were the same reddish to orange shade as their flowers. Nasna. Nasna! Tell me. Sorry, yes. Aoi had lapsed into silence, feeling like she was. We're back there with Anasana now. Arutagami's sober command pulled her back to present. Well? Because I... 
I. The bright shade she remembered from the festival, a mixture of many colors, was indescribable. The color of sunset, of lantern vine leaves, and the warm pink of a blush. Ow. Recalling it made Owie's heart ache, and her hand fluttered reflexively to her chest. Arhito Gami's soft voice cut through her jumble of thoughts. Ooh. Yes, words can't contain all the intricacies of reality. Pardon? Still, the words people do choose are intriguing. They can express a great range of colors. Arhito Gami leaned back against the wall and casually ran a fingertip across the back of, his, of a mouth perched on his surface. Like one could say, the moon takes the color of the clouds. The moon does? What do you mean? I'm glad I heard it straight from you, Owie. No one else but you. What? Um, Arhitagami, did I say something untoward? Arhitagami smiled. Why would you think that? Uh, it's just your tone of voice change, like it, it's color. Dot, 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 dot. Until a moment ago, his expression had been the same, his tone flat, but now... It's cold. Cool shades seemed to come over the room, prickling Owie with goosebumps. It's color? What color is it now? Ha, huh. I'm guessing not orange. Arhitagami. Ha, huh, it's different again now, isn't it, Oi? Um, indeed, it had changed again. Same as the spectrum, and his eyes sh had shifted. It won't be long now. Soon you'll want me so much you'll forget about the orange. All about orange. Frost had, that had momentarily chilled the atmosphere mel melted away. Huh. When Odaka came to fetch Arhitagami to escort him to his festival duties, Ali was led back to the guest room by a servant. Will you go to the festival in the grove this evening? Am I allowed to? Yes, your next treatment is late tonight. You're welcome to do as you please until then. My next treatment? Late tonight. The odd spectacle Allie had witnessed the night before had flashed in her mind. Oh. Her knees buckled as strength fled her body, and she grabbed a hold of a pillar to keep her balance. Are you all right? Allie could get Arhitagami's cold, clear tone out of her head. She often visited Nazana here, but the sounds, smells, and atmosphere were completely with him gone. Completely different with him gone. They're scary now. One moment. And Arhitagami's flawless majesty was too amazing to handle. She had no idea why she, of all people, had been allowed to speak with him. Repeating emotions of joy and suspicious, suspicion were tearing her apart. Was she being shielded or trapped, passed around the village? Scared by her own thoughts, she dropped her gaze, her pulse thumped in her ears, and her breathing turned shallow. The great mistletoe in her eye was throbbing, the pain piercing. It still hurts, even though the high priest put medicine on it. She leaned heavily against the pillar, using it to support herself while she pressed in her hand against the eye. She couldn't see straight. A rosy orange shade smeared across her dulled field of vision. Lantern vine. The leaves out on the veranda, the color that reminded her of Nazana. Nazana! Nazana? She yearned to see him more than ever. Too bad! Hmm? Who's there? Oh. Ah. 
Since leaving Arahitagami's room, Aoi had been staring mindlessly into the mossy garden outside. She froze. He hadn't moved either. Staring at him, Aoi thought she probably looked as surprised as he did. Nazda! Aoi? There he was, the second son of the most powerful man in the village, the esteemed and most influential high pri head priest. Nasna was a respectable, strapping young man who looked younger than his years. Villagers held him in high regard due to his heritage, but to Ali he was simply her best friend. Her shadow ever since she could remember. The person who defined her in exact the same way. It had been so long since she got since he'd gone to study mess in the city since they last spoken. I haven't seen you for an age. Uh yeah. Nasna? Nasna For some reason he wouldn't meet her eyes like the he always did. What's wrong? Just you know. What? Since when was the always articulate Nazna evasive? What is it? Uh... If you've got something to say, then say it. He was acting so different. Surely they hadn't been long enough to forge the kind of gulf Aoi f now felt separating them. Impatience and anxiety brewed in her. Tell me. The thing was, Aoi couldn't deny she felt different after last night too. She wanted to believe that she and Nazano would stay close as they'd been from here on. Come on, what? He kept dodging her prying stare, only flicking glances at her out of the corner of his eye. Finally looked straight at her. Are you feeling alright? Why? I heard that last night you had to. What? His words jerked her back to what she'd seen. The sordid scent filled her nostrils like she were back there. Save. I'm flooded with embarrassment and irritation. She didn't want to think about that. Usually, people usually sleep the whole day after. Are you alright with being awake? Before Nazada could say anything else about the closed ritual, Aoi slapped him. Why did he of all people bring it, have to bring it up? His stung cheek flared red. Hey, what was that for? Aoi had tr to avoid letting him learn a thing about the, what the ritual involved at all costs. She wouldn't be able to face him again if he found out. But when all was said and done, Nas- Nazna? What? What would you know? Aoi. Unable to bite her tongue, she hit him with the words she most wanted to avoid. It terrified her to be the only one of them who was afflicted. She aborted. It was too sad. They both knew the curse was only ravaging her, not him. She couldn't keep her promise to him to wait. Why am I the only one? Why can't you have it too, Nasna? What the fuck? I'm sorry. Let me die too, then. Nazna's brow furrowed. His mouth set hard. Ali wilted. There was no need for him to make that face, nor any need for him to shoulder the blame. Ali, don't come closer. Ali opened the sliding door, unable to bring herself to say anything else, let alone apologize. Nazna left at once. But though Aoi closed the door on him, she felt like she w were the one who'd been ushered out. Odaka came to Aoi's room at noon, when the festival sounded like it was in full swing. As it turned out, she couldn't set foot outside the shrine during the festival while she was a part of the closed ritual. Doing so would risk the mess and she received being sullied, sold by the unconsecrated, unconsecrated air outside. Hodaka related the matter of factly, related that matter of factly, looking completely disinterested, yet Aoi sensed unusual stiffness in his posture. 
His face looks so much like Nazanus, but so unlike at the same time. Stay here quietly until you're called. You're also welcome to walk in the forest nearby, but do not discuss Arahitagami's behavior toward you with anyone. Exercise good judgment. I will. We don't want it to get out of hand that Nazanus' friend is getting special treatment. Irritation flickered across Hadoka's stony face as he stared Aoi down. Uh, of course, I understand. Aoi ducked her hand, cow head cowering a little under his glare. Ta ta ta. Father, you called for me? You're the one who needs to exercise good judgment. You overheard? Are you letting your personal feelings get in the way of your work? Don't fall under the misapprehension that Arahitagami is only kind to you. If you do, it'll destroy your chance of succeeding me. Yes, sir. Huh. Weird. Something's amiss. Aoi gazed out across the garden, thinking back over Hodaka's words. Fragmentary re recollections of the close ritual played in her mind. And I have to go tonight as well. The tinkling of glass wind chimes strung up outside made her forget uh, the sweltering heat a little. The crowds of trees <laughs> lining the garden glowed golden as the sun fell, reminding her of the festival the year before. The sky was the same shade as it had been, the same color as Nazna's rosy skin. A gentle dust breeze, a sure sign summer was on its way, caressed Aoi's cheek. Setting, uh, save. We need more saving. Regret acting that way with Nazna. Aoi shouldn't have lashed out at him. Not when they finally met again. When had he returned? He was supposed... He supposed the school was on break. Her oppressive feeling had cleared up somewhat by seeing him. But she's still taken out her misery on him. She knew just where his bedroom was in the living quarters. But she couldn't bring herself to co make up with him. In the volatile mood she was in, she'd probably end up yelling at him again. She'd hurt him and blame it on the great mistletoe, getting the best of her. If only she weren't cursed, she'd be able to look over and land lit by, out over land lit by gorgeous sunsets for years to come, and stand tall in the peerlessly soothing dust breeze which float only across the mountains. Allie was obsessed with what would never, what could never be, tormented by futility. She lifted the bandage covering her eyes. Sprouts rustled as they bounced free. Damn it all! Giving it into sudden impulse, she tugged them. She wanted to tear them out. God, no, no! Burning pain erupted at the sight. It felt like her. She plucked out her eyeball along with them. Blood and tears gushed from her eye in salty spurts. Oh God, please stop. Fat scarlet drops splattered on the tatami floor with sickening plops. An alarming red dye her whole field of vision. What was that cry just now? A young maid woman came called out from the hallway. Oh, Miss Aoi. The girl's voice jumped an octave higher. Aoi lifted her head and made it out of silhouette of a maidservant amid red haze. The maid kept her hand against, pressed against Aoi's eye before Hotoka came and shooed her away. What the hell? Why would I do that? That sounds so painful. Not the eyeball. Hodaka half led, half carried Aoi downstairs to the basement. Same basement from the night before. She stumbled blindly on the wooden steps, struggling to find her footing. 
Are you an idiot? Why would he deign to look at you? Ow, ow, ow. Odok had dragged Allie into a different room than the one from the night before, which also smelled of fresh tatami mats. It's not like you're the only one who suffers from the great mistletoe. Uh, sit down properly. He barked orders bouncing around Allie's clammy head. It hurts. Odoka grabbed Allie's arms, forcing her onto her knees. He was only dimly aware of his leaving. I want to keep living. Every time Allie dared to hope her pain would die soon, her eye would throb harder. Her thoughts were so scrambled she couldn't tell which direction was up. Ah. Unable to keep her balance, she sunk onto her side. A shaft of light burned through a gap gate between the sliding doors. Oh. Stream of light widened as if her slumping head had been someone's cue to open the door. Yes, just stunning. Unbelievable. Ah. Oh. The stranger was raving. It sounded like he was in the grips of a delusion. Shut up. You're going to let her... No! I feel sick. Nauseated by the sleepy voice, Allie felt her consciousness slipping away. What happened? I gather she tried to rip out the great mistletoe. Allie? Hmm? Is that him? Mired in a feverish fugue, Allie stirred in the, at the sound of Arhitagami's voice. He's lost in pain. Hand me that tincture. Her. Full fingertip lightly spread something wet across her right eye, bringing with it the scent of fallen leaves. I have to wake up? Allie knew it was unforgivably rude of her not, to not acknowledge Arhitagami and struggled to face him. But her body wouldn't move as she willed it to. It was vaguely aware of another man and the attendant bandaging her. It's uncomfortable, isn't it? Our Hitagami traced the finger gently over her bandage. Naughty girl. Naughty, naughty. His whisper, so close and suffused with delight, warmed her ear. It's like her to the counter tug. Naughty. It was utterly unlike the harsh voices that had assailed her earlier, so pe peaceful and lovely as it echoed in her head. How oh, his eyes gotten so bad. Nazna fretted as he lay out fresh clothes in Arhitagami's room for him to use after the nightly clothes ritual had finished. Hidoka would be appalled by at how my mind's wandering during work. While serving our Hitagami, one had to focus on him alone, nothing else. Or so Hidoka always said, but he couldn't pick faults with Nazuna so long as he wait wasn't in the room. Aoi was roped into the closed ritual, so I have to accept it. The great mistletoe was awfully advanced. Was progressing too fast and too greatly, so in that regard, the festival's close ritual was basically a stroke of luck and had come just in time. Now, what am I thinking? She'll be okay until I become a doctor. I know she will. Ari Tagami's medicine was would slow the floor of calamity, malign malignancy in her until then. It was thanks to this his medicine that villager symptoms always went into remission during the winter. Ari Tagami was the only one who could make the concoction just so. He'll be able to give Aoi some of it tonight. If only Nasuna could analyze a sample at a lab in the city, he might be able to mass produce it. Then the village would might be saved from its epidem epidemic. Why is Aoi so much worse than everyone else's? Maybe it would take more than Ari Tagami's medicine to cure her. There's so much of it on her face. Perhaps the curse had taken deep root inside of her. Stop! Stop daydreaming and finish putting the damn soap out, Nasuna. Okay. 
All right. You're still here? Oh. Crap, he's back. Sorry, I'll be done in a second. Mm. While Nazna smoothed out the last wrinkles on the futon blanket, Oliver Kitagami stared calmly out across the garden. What's he looking at? He didn't so much a glance at Nazna, instead his eyes were trained on something in the courtyard, which was dimly illuminated by lantern light. This will do. It looks good enough. It had taken Nazna longer than he expected to finish the task. He hadn't done it for a while. He mumbled another apology as he moved to the door, but stopped short as when he saw who it was that Arahitagami was watching. Aoi. Odaka was escorting her down the corridor on the opposite side of the garden. Asta forgot all about apologizing for dallying and moved instinctively to go after them. However, a cold hand on his arm stopped him in his tracks. Where are you going? Huh? Arigitagami's eyes reflected the pitch dark pockets of the countryside, so unlike the city lights Nazuna had gotten used to. For some reason, Nazuna was rooted to the spot, unable to speak. Uh oh. Murder. Well, uh, so sorry. That'll be all then. Of course, I'll be off. Why do you have Freecious now? Asuna felt weirdly like he lost track of time in that instant. He glanced across the garden. Aoi was no longer anywhere to be seen. Da da da. Ah, the smell of new growth. Aoi drew a deep breath of fresh air. Having taken advantage of her leave to wander the Shrine's Grove, I feel like myself again. The morning hung in the air, springly, springy moss buoyed her ambling footsteps. Sunshine fell in strands through the canopy above, glittering on the green forest floor. People had been scattered here, and there had been, and there when she would entered the woods, but. No bustling festival see sounds reached where she was now. Only the songs of birds and cicadas trilled from the high in the trees. A refreshing breeze dried in her bandage, which prickled from sweat on her forehead. She unwound it. Naturally, the great mistletoe she turned out of her eye the day before had grown, regrown, but her burning pain and fever had vanished without a trace. Aoi felt she th ought to still be petrified with fear risen from her core, but she wasn't scared at all. So, it's true. Something existed in the world which could free Aoi from the Great Mistletoe, and rapidly, too. She vaguely remembered her pain and fear subsiding while Arahitagami had applied some sort of solitaire eye. The brief, gentle caress of her his wonderfully cold fingertips came back to her. Arihitagami. Desperate to tell someone how she felt, Aoi unburdened herself by mumbling to into to a sapling too thin to lean against. Confused. So confused. We should start heading back, Arihitagami. Oh? Same time, Aoi caught a scent, a whiff of the rich aroma of the out of season wisteria flowers. She had heard Hadoka somewhere close by. Everyone is getting ready for night, preparing for your ceremonial dance. Thought that thought. Hadoka and Arahitogami were some distance away at a small bridge spanning a clear, burbling spring. Arahitogami was partly obscured by the tassels of the blossoming wisteria. Dangling from swaying branches, so Aoi can only catch could only catch glimpses of him. Excuse me, he looks beautiful. Sunlight bathing his white kimono seemed to dye the silk of silk a shade of lilac. Aoi watched, captivated, as he stood peacefully, 
resting one hand against the large wisteria tree's trunk. It looked as if the branches were straining to touch his cheek with their tufts of petals. Are he to got me. Just a little longer. All right. What is he doing? Before she realized what she was doing herself, Allie found she'd taken a step forward. Ah. Chill bit her foot. She inadvertently stepped into the water's edge. Warped ripples in the stream gave her away. Though she couldn't see Arahitagami's face, she had a feeling he was smiling. Did something just happen, happen just now? In response to Adoka's suspicion, Ali took a, another step forward. The rich scent of wisteria flowers engulfed her in a saccharine miasma. This fragrance. Owie. Owie. Oh, you. Yes? Ha. Huh. Found you. Oh, um... She became aware that a vine had coiled around her wrist. At the same time, it finally hit her. I know this fragrance. It's how our heat got me smelled the other night. The memory set her pulse pounding in her ears. Until it beat so hard that her heart, until her heart beat so hard that it hurt. Come over here. The color of Arahitagami's eyes shifted, reflecting the subtle purple petals fluttering about around him. Okay. Alrighty then. I just came over without thinking. Ali drew nearer, his beckoning hand like she were being breathed in, but she hadn't a clue what he wanted with her, so her gaze skirted the ground. A set of half-damp footsteps trailed where she trod. Doka glared in silence over Arahitagami's shoulder. What do I do now? Owie. 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 Y yes Why won't you look straight at me? Her pulse clanged harder in her ears. It hurt to breathe. He's scary, but... Under dappling sunlight, sunlight he somehow looked more awe-inspiring than ever. He looked completely different to how he looked then. In a dim basement room on an early summer night, he looked bewitching then. In that uncomfortably humid air, blurred by candlelight, Less vicious, lascivious. She'd had half a mind to shove that man off of him and dirty him herself. Ah, where did that come from? Owie blushed, blindsided by a recollection of that urge. Pain whipped through her eye. Your temperature's risen. What? You're hotter than before. Oh. Ari Tagami held his curled fingers to her cheek. The coolness of the tree trunk on which he leaned seeped into her skin. It made her feel like she slipped into the spring water below them. So nice and cool. Pleasant. Ah. Realizing she closed her eyes, Ali blinked them open again. Don't you think? His tone was l lilting, his eyes amused, no doubt he noticed her lurking a while back. It, it is. Haha, <laughs> thought so. Yeah, still too soon though. What? Ari Tagami brushed his brows that gazed, grazed Aoi's cheekbone. They're hot. They are hot. Oh, those? Her rash act the night before came flooding back to her, and she sank in shame. I'll put something on them. Come to my room. Oh, but... Odoka stared daggers at Aoi from behind Arahitagami, warning her without words that she ought to refuse. 
Well, come on. Oblivious, our Hitagami took Aoi's hand. Ah. Her arm swung from his as he led her back through the forest. Is this a dream? His delicate frame belied his firm grasp and the taut musculature on his of his wrist, having her fingers intertwined with his dental reel. Your your hands soft. What? As smooth as a new blade of a blade of new grass. I, is it? I say the same about his. Arahitagami's face no longer bore any resemblance to the mask when she the key glanced back. The eloquent look in his eyes flowed with the colors of changing seasons, almost gave them a voice. That was telling Aoi she was special. I am special. Oh, there's Hodaka. Now there was still some time until the evening. Townsfolk were already gathering outside the shrine to wait Arahitogami's performance. Nasuna shuffled through the busy staff in the hall, searching for Hodoka to give him something his father wanted him to pass on. He soon spotted him. Hodoka looked like he'd just returned from wherever he'd gone with Arahitogami. He looked kind of pissed. Hodaka, sir, shall I wash your feet to purify them? Later. Where's father? Um, he's overseeing arrangements in the Grand Hall. Hodaka brushed against a bucket-laden maid and stalked off, apparently not noticing how he caused her to spill a dash of soapy water on the floor. Nasuna followed him to find out what was going on, his footsteps muffled by Hodaka's stomping. I brought Hari he took me back, sir. You did? Where is he then? In his room, putting more medicine on Aoi. I see. You shouldn't leave her and come here. No, it's alright. Let him do as he pleases. It's not as if he won't show up at the last minute. But sir, why does he extend special treatment to Aoi? He's never cared about anyone else who was brought to the closed ritual. Now it's like... Oh, Father, why aren't you doing anything about it? Are you saying she's that... Our Hitagami appears to think so. But why her? We're the ones who've looked after him all this time. It can't be true. <laughs> I wish our ancestor put on the paper in the diary wasn't granted either. So that's how it is. Odaka. So the great mistletoe will come to plague me too, same with, as everyone else. I wasn't chosen. Refuse. What's Odaka talking about? Diary? What diary? All the documents our family built up over the years are in the storehouse. I'll go there later. As an illegitimate son and not the primary heir, there was much that Nazna didn't know about. There was much that Nazuna didn't know about the festival or his family. Realizing he'd overheard something he shouldn't have, his heart began to thud. Doki doki sudu. Oh goodness. Ali sucked in a breath. Does that hurt? No, it's okay. Ah, putting on a brave face. I wouldn't, uh... It felt like Arahitagami were jabbing needles into her eye with each new layer of mugwort scented ointment he applied. Why is he looking at me so closely? Excuse me. Had he appeared at her in the same manner over the past two nights as well, Ali couldn't remember. Why are you being so nice to me? Why do you need to ask? Am I that pitiful? Pitiful? It won't last much longer anyways. 
great mistletoe affected, afflicted her more severely than anyone else. It hadn't abated even when, after she'd been present, present at the closed ritual. That's the only reason she keeps doting on me. That's, that's quite rude. Oh. I, I know everyone's getting treated the same. I spoke out of turn. I'm very sorry. All right, Hitagami, we really need to start getting ready. Then go do so. What? But... I want to be alone, just the two of us. I told you that. Yes, I know. So? But... What should I do? Our Hitagami's mounting our pose... Poisoned the air with tension. Eventually, Hadoka capitulated. Fine, I'll go take care of things. Sorry to have disturbed. Hadoka scowled at Ali on his way out. Sharp glare wasn't lost on her, despite her face being turned up by Hiro Arahitagami. Stopping footsteps died away in the distance. I never knew Ahadoka had such a temper. What are you thinking about? Oh, nothing. Aoi. Y yes Is there anything you'd like to know? Pardon? About me. About me! There are so many things. Ask away, you don't need to be shy. But, our Hitagami, we can finally talk together, but you're still closed up. What do you mean? I've waited all this time, ever since I first sent you that day, Aoi. Our Hitagami. Every time he said her name, Aoi felt like she was coming apart at the seams. What is this sensation? It felt like anxiousness, like anticipation. You're the only one who can know all about me. I'll show you everything. But please look at me. I can show you the world. Ah, there it is again. The sweet fragrance of wisteria flowers arose from him once more. It was so heady it made the room spin. So heavy, I think. And again, Allie felt something inside of her seem to crack. See, you feel it too. I do? I know all there is to know about you, and yet... Arigitagami smiled like he saw right through her hesitance. You still don't understand? Or will you just not look me in the eye again? His immaculate face drew nearer to hers. He's radiating warmth. She couldn't help but look up to indulge in the, his incredible eyes. Rolling fear and agitation froze her body. She could hardly breathe. This year festival has just begun, but it's almost over. Our Hitagami. You'll come watch the ceremonial dance, won't you? Ali was barely aware of herself, drawing closer to him. Uh, of course I will. Good, I want you to see me dance this year. Everything's spinning. Ali was paralyzed like the pillars outside were held fast by vines. I want to see you bloom, Ali. Ah. Uh, you licking her? Ew. Ew. Something warm and wet gently stroked her eye. Tastes like mugwort. I'll need to reapply it. At least Allie discerned that the breaking inside of her was actually something blooming. What? It's packed. As well as swarming with people, the whole area around the shrine was flooded with lantern vines. 
The rare busy scene showed that even the maligned village would stream with life in summery colors on occasion. I can't believe I'm seeing the festival from an insider's perspective. Allie hadn't gotten this close to the super stage since she was a child. Ah, uh, beginning. The heat of the day melted as dusk and melted the town. At last, the low peeling of the pipe heralded the vent. Everyone had been waiting for our Hitagami's holy dance. His white kimono, dyed orange by flickering torchlight, cut finally through the parting crowd as he ascended the stage's step. Everywhere smells sweet of flowers. Ari Tagami's sleeve swayed as he whirled, drifting above the drumstruck crowd. The fan he held, a single leaf of a sacred evergreen, fluttered hypnotically in his hand. His eyes and dancing alike blended the elements of every season. Wow. Allie felt like her very soul was at his mercy. Everyone gazing up at the super stage no doubt felt the same. Their eyes devoured him, watching his supple limbs twist gracefully in time with the beat. Everyone became one-minded of one mind. They all felt that they somehow strayed into the boundary separating this world from another, or dreams of from waking life. All anyone could feel was that they were themselves a part of the forest growing all around. He looks magnificent, like a, an unfurling flower. With stereo petals heaped on the stage, eddied around his feet as they moved. Had there even been that many flowers collected there earlier? They transformed since being loose from their evergreen branches. Enraptured, sighs billowed in the air. The dance was done to honor and placate the mountain god that had cursed the village. Our Hitagami's dance serves as an offering from all of us, but who does he choose to dance for? For the mountain god? For himself? Or for the people of the town? Or for me? The chosen one. I lost track with myself watching him again. When the moon had climbed to the top of the sky, Ari Tagami's medicine was deemed consecrated and handed out at the sacred tree. The festival was officially over. People tottered as they dispersed, still intoxicated by the dance. Waves of them returning to their homes flowed around Aoi, knocking her shoulders as they passed by her. Sorry, excuse. Where do you think you're going? Hodaka. No one can see you standing there. You're, they're still caught up in what they saw. Pardon? Ouch. No, I was, um, Hodoka. Hodoka clasped Ali's shoulder so tightly it felt like he was trying to shatter her bones. Ow, Hodoka. The plants growing from Ali's eyes began to hate horribly. You think you're someone worth noticing? Beastly ferocity gleamed in Hadoka's eyes. His eye, he looked like a predator on the hunt. He kept his large hand clasped on Aoi's shoulder despite the pain coursing through her. Her breathing turned ragged with rising fear. I told you to know your place. You're taking advantage of him. Only people in my family may serve him during the closed ritual. You may be distantly related, but for him to favor you, someone like you... Does it feel good to get the jump on everyone else in the village? I... I don't mean to. Don't I? Honestly? A whisper from Allie's subconscious forced her to consider what she... that she did. I, uh, think he's... The truth is, I find... Arhitagami scary. Yes, that's how I feel. His behavior... How she couldn't explain how he made her feel, and how he was free from the great mistletoe's curse. The more Allie thought about him, the less she knew, and the more she feared. I... What? Hadoka's grip on Allie's shoulder relaxed a little, easing her pain. Why did you ask? Am I, am I going to die shortly after all? Is that why? 
I don't want to die yet. She refused to be returned to the mounds until she kept her promise to Nazana. She'd keep her great mistletoe under control until he was a doctor. Haha, <laughs> calling him scary, just like a little kid. That's our Hitagami you're talking about. He belongs to my family. You're nothing more than an interloper, as long as you're aware of that. Go back to your room you're staying in. Weird. Hmm. Oh, right. Allie took in the dimly lit room. She returned to the, her designated room at the shrine as soon as Hadoka released her. Her subsequent unattended doze had made her all the more fatigued. I'm too weary even accounting for all the effects of the great mistletoe. Everyone knew the curse drained people of their energy. Until they could do nothing but sleep, at which point all hope was lost. Hmm? Who could that be? Are you awake? Nazna! You sound half asleep. It was dark in here. I didn't want to disturb. I just woke up. What's that smell? Delicious aroma accompanied steam wafting from a tray balanced in Nazna's hand. Yeah, I thought you might be hungry. Ali wondered if he'd asked someone in the kitchen to prepare the something especially for her. Thank you. No problem. I am hungry. The soft sweet rice gruel melted on her tongue. Each chew filled her mouth with the crisp flavor of mountain vegetables. It tastes great. More than good. It's great. Just a few days ago, Ali had been dying to see Nasta again, but now she didn't know what to say to him. All she could do was keep lifting spoonfuls of gruel to her lips. I should have apologized to him yesterday. Nasna? Yeah? Aren't you going to eat too? I ate earlier. Oh. Eat up, you look like you've lost weight. Do I? Mm-hmm. The meals they make here at the shrine are really good. Are they? When we were kids, I always thought the food at your place was better. Really? Yep. Hey, do you remember that time we sneaked into the grounds by the stage when we were little? When? Oh, yeah, I remember you showing up late. Uh, yeah, seems so long ago. We grew up in the blink of an eye. But you're the only one out there carving a path in the world. Aoi. Nasna. Yeah? I don't have enough save boxes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He came out more melancholy than she had attended. As if the specter of the great mistletoe and Allie's body polluted even the apology that left her mouth. Where did that come from? Nasna was looking straight at her bandaged eye. Please don't make that face. Allie resumed eating, pretending she didn't notice. Yeah, this really is great. The rice school had lost all of its delicate flavor it had it held a moment ago. Make sure you hold on until I become a doctor, okay? Even now, Nazna's words echoed in Ali's mind. Ali repeated them endlessly to herself like a mantra. Could she keep her promise? How many more summers could she wait for him? As if in answer to her incessant questions, a shot of pain flared in her eye. It's so warm. Ali slid into the blissfully hot, crystal clear water at the shrine's bathhouse. Spring replenished water trickled over the tub's rim and spilled from her cupped hands. It smells lovely. 
Steam clouds held the pungent smell of sandalwood, which rose from the soap placed on the bass ledge. Scent probably compliments our Hitagami's fragrance when he bathes. Hmm. I feel a bit lightheaded. Allie paused on the veranda, building to cool down after the hot medicinal bath. Though the festival was over, the great mistletoe grieved her as usual. Maybe my family's too far removed from Nazanus for the closed ritual to work. Her hand strayed habitually towards her eye. Without thinking, she pressed the palm on into it. Ow! Before he, she could lose her nerve, she gritted her teeth and... Oh, please don't! Stilled her safe to yank the sprouts that had claimed her. Her clothes fist slid across the slippery steams. Not a good start. But she pulled them again and again and again. Ah! Uh, please, God! The great mistletoe was rooted deep in her eye. She remembered the agony of when she stopped halfway before and kept going. I'm still okay. I'm still okay. She wasn't part of the mountain yet. Not so long as she could feel the pain. But as long as she was hurting, she was alive. Owie. What? Owie instinctively turned to the face of the owner, the sonorous voice which reminded her of a flowing mountain stream. He stood on a path, dully lit by lanterns carried by his attendants. Are he to me. Even in the low light of moon and flickering candles, he was striking enough to draw the eye. The dance. What? You were smiling when I saw you. Your eyes glazed over. You saw me. A teasing smile played on Arahitagami's lips as if he saw through Ali's embarrassment. A signal must have passed amongst the attendants gathered behind him as they drew back at once. Their footsteps echoed as they disappeared into the moonlight night. Moonlit night. The sandalwood scent of the bathhouse floated in the air as Arahitagami approached Aoi. Perhaps he'd come from there too. It's, it's, it's the same fragrance. Pardon? But you smell the same as me as well. With the light of the moon behind him, Aoi couldn't determine his expression, but regardless of the darkness he cast over her, he seemed graciously open. Show me your hand. Why? Ah. Ah. Ari Tagami smoothly, smoothly took Aoi's wrist. Broken stem she's torn from her eyes fell from her palm and scattered on the ground. Why would you do such a thing? Doesn't it hurt you to rip them out? They were just buds. They would have suited you so well when they bloomed. His abruptness cut through Aoi's lingering pain. Makes me feel alive. Because it makes me feel alive, but I, like I'm still me. Aoi only realized how argumentative her words were after she blurted them out. When her eyes finally grew accustomed to the darkness, she was ill prepared for how cold Arahitagami's reflecting gaze was. He looked like a chilled flower winding down, winding open in the still night. Everyone calls the great mistletoe death itself. They say it reeks and refuse to touch it. When they do, it melts into a vile goo. Yes, it does. All of the village inhabitants were subject to the same interminable, vague terror. Forced to live under the constant threat of the great mistletoe coming to them sooner rather than later, everyone pretended not to see the curse when it afflicted others. People whispered about the tragic event, fate Ali's family endured, but at a distance. If anyone ever looked at the great mistletoe's plants sprouting from others, they certainly become the god's next victim. That was what everyone believed. But yours breathes. Yours is a mark and part of you. What? Before Ali could react, Arhi Tagami placed a hand behind her head to support her and grasped her eye stems. Ah, here, Arhi Tagami. 
Al yelped and squeezed her eye shut in an act of meager resistance. Without hesitation, Arhi Tagami pulled the sprouting plants hard. Ah! Then so he released Sally. Her hands flew to her eye. Her whole skull burned like it was on fire. How's that? Did it make you feel alive? Alright, he took on me. Ha <laughs> ha. While Aoi wept like an old woman betrayed, he chuckled like a blithe kid. Your face was so tempting. I can't couldn't help letting myself go. Ah. <sighs> you just got out of the bath, right? Your skin's so soft. Aoi could hardly think, let alone make out Arhitagami's shape for the excruciating pain still electrifying her. His distorted figure waved, wavered like a mirage before her good eye, but as well as, as, well as pain, strange tingling trilled through Aoi from deep in her core. She felt Arhitagami's arm like still wrapped around her, and as if he were cradling like cradling her eye, entire eyeball in his po other palm. She leaned heavily against him, unable to stand alone. There we go. He dabbed her tears softly with the inside of his silk sleeves. Shiver ran down her back as his cool palm grazed her cheek. Fragrance filled the air. Ah. Gentle as a kitten, he nuzzled her throat, breathing her in. Come to me soon. That was as much as Allie could remember. That was weird. Got to eat my eyeball. Felt like a dream. Why? Allie dimly noticed she was swaying through the air. She was being carried? Was she awake or asleep? Alive or dead? Nothing was discernible in the darkness, but our Hitagami's voice echoed in her mind. Come to me soon. Come to me soon! Am I considering pursuing him? Meeting Arhi Tagami's eyes, let alone speaking with him, never felt real. Chasing after such a man would be like courting a hero in a myth. But part of Ali wanted him. It urged her to wake up and find him. I want answers. What was it he wanted from Ali? Why did he turn his intentions to her? Every time he sm she smelled his scent, she was mesmerized. Her skin tingled whenever he touched her. For that reason. What the? The flower. I want to know. What would change if she let this, this spark in her flare up? She was still alive. For now. That plant has gotten bigger. Hmm? What? Where am I? Alex's lucid dream vanished as she blinked in her, her head clear. Where was she? The ground beneath her feet was hard but springy. She was outside. The full moon swam high overhead, meaning some hours must have passed since she was last conscious. Our Hitagami would have finished handing out all the medicine at the sacred tree by now. Now he tried to take a step, but couldn't judge how far away the ground was. My eye. The great mistletoe had regrown in short interval while she was unconscious. Browse floor so much that they had pushed up her bandage. She could hardly see out of her right eye. Her heart tightened with frustration, and she hugged her arms around herself tightly. Hmm? I know the smell. Forgetting her eye and chest, Allie inhaled deeply through her nose. I know this. It was a smell that she couldn't, that couldn't be captured even in a poem. She breathed in it again like she'd seen him do, searching the breeze. This fragrance. It was indescribable, so glorious she could drown in it. It resembled that of wisteria flowers, but was slightly different. Something about it was intoxicatingly alluring. I always sniffled, sniffed over and over. Where's it coming from? She refastened her bandage, securing it as if to tamp down her anxieties, and took off unsteadily in search of the source of the delectable scent. It's him. Purple petals danced silently in the air. 
Sinbad had led Owie, filled the whole glade she stumbled into. A nice zephyr swept around her, drawing goose bumps on her skin. Arahitagami stood amongst the whirling petals, dashed over the midnight. Like, I'm still asleep. Spellbound, Owie could only stare as he turned to her and opened his mouth. Like a dream to be here with you. Know why? He feels the same way? Because you are my flower. And you? How do you feel? A oh, pardon? Am I your flower too? I... Coughing fit overcame her. There's something in my throat. Her chest heaved as she weeps, unable to reply to Arhitagami. Can't. Arhitagami watched in silence as she strained to clear her airway. Heated by his unbroken, patient gaze, Ali gagged and spit something up. Ah, uh, buds. Fresh, wet, little green buds filled her hands. The gray mistletoe. Her comfort for a mo from a moment before was doused by a chill that ran down her spine. She shook her trembling hands to scatter the buds and coughed again. It felt horribly like having a sprig of parsley stuck in her throat. She covered her mouth, trying to force the protruding sprouts back in. Allow me to eat them for you. W what? Arakitagami took her chin in his cool hand and tilted it up. People call this a curse, but it isn't a curse at all. Wh what are you doing? Aoi's skin beneath his fingers felt electrified as if she were being struck by, struck by lightning. It's a mark, aside from only one person to notice. A mark? What for? Aoi's body flushed with heat, her breathing shortened Breathing short and painfully, Ari Tagami smiled at her strenuous efforts to respond. His expression was as open as a fully unfurled flower. Perhaps you'll understand if I call it a sign of love. Deep love. The deepest love. People want to find a lover who'll help create pos prosperous descendants with them. You want that as well, don't you? I... I... The more Ali wanted to speak, the less she was able to. The searing beauty of the starlit sky in the in Arahitagami, uh, excuse me, the searing beauty of the scarlet sky in Arahitagami's eyes kept emptying her mind. You can't communicate properly as so long as you stay like this. Don't leave a trace of you asleep. Bloom for me. That way, we, that we may fill up one another. What? A flash of incendiary scarlet flared in his eyes. Are you to got me? What bliss it would be to rip your pistol from its calyx sheath. To strip you of your damn petals. As quickly as it appeared, the fire in his eyes was swept away and replaced by the cool of the dark night. He's so beautiful. Surely no human could possess eyes such as these which bared down upon her. It's so beautiful. Awe and horror battered Owie's heart's heart. Suddenly, the world around them distorted into a hazy blur. Owie clung to Ar Arhitagami's kimono sleeves to balance, her legs quivering, quivering so fiercely that she could hardly stand. Oh, I need to apologize. Are you in pain? Her apology for leaning profanely on him was cut short by an eruption of pain in her head. It was gut-wrenching in its severity. Nausea hollowed her out. It felt as if her eyes' membranes were both being pulled apart. She twisted her hand in the fabric of Arhitagami's sleeves. Cold sweat broke out upon her skin. She couldn't see straight. Looks like you're feeling it inside. Ah. Uh, hmm, lukewarm. Ali couldn't understand what he meant. Until a moment later when a throb deep in her stomach was followed by the sensation of something cl clutching her organs. It occurred to her that the ache was coupled with a kind of tantalizing itch. She gasped sharply. Ah. Uh, 
Is this the great mistletoe coming for me? Had the day finally arrived when she was to die, the pain was like none she'd ever felt. I wish someone would have told me this is what it's like. Living God, so this is where you slipped away to. Odaka's voice boomed in Allie's ears. She couldn't tell how far away he was. What are you doing? Wow, look at that eye. So the great mistletoe has come to collect you. Then leave Arhi to Gami alone and run along to the mountains. You can't walk. I'll carry you there. Don't touch her, Hodoka. What? Do not touch her. G why her? Why this girl? Tell me. Why, when I've served you so well for so long? When I've always been so devoted? When I've sacrificed everything for you? Although you've never lifted a finger for me? What has this girl said to bewitch you? Tell me what makes she and I so different. Living God. Aoi made out. Hodoka striding towards Arhitagami in the corner of her blurred vision. Then some sort of movement took place. Horrendously sickeningly slowly. Even so, she struggled to follow what was happening with her unfocused eye. Ooh, someone dead. Why does it come to this every time? No matter how many years pass, people like you still don't get it. You're flawed. Arhitagami's voice was as calm as the quiet before a storm. Large droplets of something. Tepid dripped onto Aoi. Is this... blood? Adoka moaned, his cry rasping as if he were being trampled or wrung out. Aoi had never seen any living creature stain so red. The raw sight pierced the haze clou clouding her mind. She began to comprehend what had happened. No, there's no way. She wiped her cheek with a trembling hand, warm blood spewed across it. Living God. Ugh. Oh. Neither the despairing sorrow nor the words in Hadoka's pleas drew the slightest reaction from the person he sought to implore. Arhitagami's eyes were colorless, reflecting the black of night. Ooh. The great mistletoe tore Hadoka's body apart as he spilled from as it spilled from him. Writhing creepers glistened as they crawled, over overrunning him. So the great mistletoe has come to take to me any er. Red splashes spattered across, splattered from Hadoka's lips with each word. A tremendously thick vine which had sprung from his stomach bloomed a massive crimson flower. It appeared to be sapping the energy from him, bleeding him dry. Repulsive, disgraceful. Hadoka's body turned rigid as it convulsed, then relaxed, softened, and ceased moving altogether. How could this happen? Him. Hadoka didn't even have symptoms of Great Mistletoe yet. A voice whispered from the depths of Aoi's mind. The only possible explanation is if... Him. Her inner voice spoke from her subconscious, but it doesn't sound like her at all. So what are you, Arhitagami? He did that. He stood surveying the monstrous scene, his face unscrutably blank. Oh, you got some on you. You better come wash it off with me. He was as profoundly elegant as always, in stark contrast with their surroundings. The present gaze took Aoi back to when his face had reminded her of his mask. All of his emotions were nothing more than reflections. Was he a god? Or was he the devil? A monster or a monster? Huh? A monster. He was a monster. A malicious entity in human form which roamed at will among the living. Aoi cast a sidelong glance at Hadoka, lying in a pool of blood. He's been returned to the mountains in the surest sense of the term. Arhitagami did that to him? Him, it's him. He's the great mistletoe. You're the great mistletoe. No, no. 
Crouching footsteps close in behind Allie. She couldn't move without the sound of dirt and twigs underfoot giving away her attention to flee. Someone. Nazna. Ali silently screamed the name branded inside her heart. Why won't you turn around, Ali? You. There's a post behind you that you can lean on. Yes, there was a post propping up the, a heavy wisteria. Branch right beside her and a beautiful monster standing right there. Is he going to kill me like he did Hodoka? Perhaps that was the only way anyone was ever returned to the mound. I don't want to go. Aoi didn't want to die, not by any means. I want... Nazna. She wanted to see Nazna again to talk to him one more time. Arahitagami is the great mistletoe. Will the village's curse be lifted if someone kills him? He was the great mistletoe and he was right in front of her. Aoi? Arr. Aoi squeezed her eyes shut and flew at Arahitagami. He toppled without the slightest resist Excuse me. Slightest resistance onto a bed of moss. Aoi straddled him, panting with exertion. What are you doing? Even in this situation, his expression, expression remained blank. Same as it when, was when he mercilessly tried to rip the stems out of her eye. Aoi wrapped her hands around his neck. His pulse beat through her palms, his, her fingers began to tremble. If only... you were here. Oh, he did that weird motion stuff again. If only you weren't... Her grip had no strength. Ari Tagami's blue-tinged ebony hair spilled in a halo on the ground around his hair, head. He watched her patiently, his irises flicking, flickering through the colors of the season, reflecting back at Aoi, the brutal image of herself. Even now, he looks beautiful beyond belief. You don't like me? Huh? In that instant, Great mistletoe came surging out of Allie's body, and I'm dead. She felt no pain, no pain. Vines sprawled from her along the ground and slithered up tree trunks. Plants enveloped her like it was the most natural process in the world. Look, something was writhing in its way out of her eye, ripping her flesh like paper. I know. Allie became a part of the mouths. All she could sense was the feeling of being uni united with the earth. Well, that sucked. Was that a bad ending? God, that had to be a bad ending. Felt like a bad ending. Ah! What's a good ending? Uh, I gotta clear my throat. I'll be back and I'm gonna try to get the rest of the endings. That was... <laughs> this game's long. <laughs> Jesus. Alright, so we got ending one. We became one with the earth. With Hodoka. Alright, I don't really know what options would lead to a good ending though. Yashiko! The daggum great mistletoe, boys. Jesus. Oh. M skills. Thank you. Alright, let's do it again. We gotta get the gut ending somehow.
Owie. If the mountains call you Owie, they've stolen you away. All your promising buds have withered. How cruel of you. Now I have to wait for the next you to come along. But this ground is good, a fine place for you to have fallen. Still filled the traces of you in it. Thought I was picking all the good, like, uh, ending two, Parasite. You want a badge? Collect in the new window. Japanese. Oh, I don't have Japanese. No, thank you. Oh, wow. Oh my god, like, everything seems to lead to the fucking Parasite ending. I get the same ending this time I give up. That's all I can find. Oh lord. Alright, and then I get the same fucking ending. God damn it. <laughs> I don't. Oh. Wait. Oh, by the way, this is different, I think. What? Forgot to give you your souvenir before. I wasn't sure what you'd like. So I got you this. It's in the big. It's big in the city at the moment. Nasna produced a fancy box with essential floral oils written on it. What a pretty box. It'll be a shame to break its seal. Ha! Even the box smells nice. Flowers, cosmetics, and the city all blended with the sweet scent of glossy lacquered wood. Ha <laughs> What's so funny? Were you embarrassed when you went to buy it? Not really. Ha! <laughs> Thank you. No problem. How was the city? Nothing like here. The smell of car exhaust fumes and the way people rush around is wild. The dust is unbelievable too. And thanks to the streetlights, some parts of the city don't die down e e even at night. Huh. Wonder what it's like, looks like, what it smells like. Allie tried to picture bustling Nice streets, but all she could imagine was the infinite darkness of the village. What's wrong? I still don't understand how such a fantastical course can exist. It's a relic button from a bygone age. Huh. It really is dark as anything out, there, out here. Nasta lapsed into silence. Allie couldn't think of anything to say. She turned her back and busied herself folding the fine cloth wrapping the box had come in, dodging his clear gaze. E? What? Nazana? His tone was somewhere between a growl and a moan. What's going on here? Just as Aoi turned to face him, Nazana threw his arms around her with surprising force. 
His heat and scent, the same one embedded in the futon on which she slept, wrapped around her blanket. Why? Why does it have to be you the who suffers? Well, I can't do any a thing about it. Why? Why? Kazna. What makes? What about him makes a live him a living god? Why are he to got me? He really is blessed. Then it has to be all right that he's treating you. It has to be, doesn't it? Nazna's quivering arms, his heat and his voice drew tightly around you, capturing her. Owie, capturing her. Nazna, I could shatter right now. She knew she wanted to keep this moment in her heart. Come the day when she's turn, be turned to grass and weeds. When she'd shed petals instead of tears from where her eyes used to be. We finally got something different, thank the lord! Owie! I swear I'll make it in time. Nazna. Just wait a little longer, please. Okay. Wait. Wait was the only word in her mind after all all that her body and soul was clinging to. Alright, I need to save. We got something different. Save, please. Save your boy. Uh, save. Oh, wrong button. Save. Shit. Back. God damn it. Load. Something changed there. Then you. Yeah, we had something different there. I don't want to miss it. <laughs> we finally making progress. The dance, what? Oh. No, he was staring at her. Owie couldn't. He just said something. Let me read what he just said. Something weird. A teasing smile played on our he. Togami's lips as if he saw through Aoi's embarrassment. A signal must have passed among the blah blah blah. I don't know this scent. What? You're covered in the sin of the city. Who have you been with? Though he was staring at her, Aoi couldn't make his face out well. Okay, things are changing. But as this looming shadow plunged her into darkness, fear grew in the pit of her stomach. Show me your hand. Huh? Arikitamagami smoothly took her as you turn it into my mama. How would you do such a thing? Makes me feel alive. Because it makes me feel like uh, I'm still alive. I'm still me. Ali only realized how argumentative that eh, don't matter. When her eyes finally grew accustomed to the darkness, she was ill-prepared for how cold our Hitogami's reflecting gaze was. He looked like a chilled flower winding open in the still night. Everyone calls the great mistletoe death itself. They say it reeks and refuse to touch it. When they do, it melts into vile goo. Yes, it does. All the village inhabitants, something something, forced to live under the constant threat of the great mistletoe coming to them sooner rather than later. Everyone pretended to not see the curse when it afflicted others. If anyone ever looked closely at the great mistletoe's plant sprouting from victims, they certainly become the god's next victim. That was what everyone believed. But yours breathes. Yours is a mark, a part of you. What? Before I could react, Aohitagami placed a hand behind her head to support her and grasped the eye stems. Ah, oh, to Togami, Aoi yelped and squeezed her eyes shut in an act of meager resistance. Without res hesitation, Arahi Togami pulled the sprouting plants hard. Ah! Then so her, he released Aoi. Her hands flew to her eye. Her skull burned like it was on fire. 
How was that? Did that make it feel alive? Arahitagami. Haha. While Aoi wept like an old woman betrayed, he chuckled like a bright kid. Your face was so tempting, I couldn't let myself... Couldn't help letting myself go. Huh. You just got out of the bath, right? Your skin's so soft. Aoi could hardly think. Let alone make out her he took on these. Her disturbed figure wavered like a barrage before her good eye. But as well as pain, strange tingling thrilled through, thrilled through Aoi from deep in her core. She felt Arahitagami's arms still wrapped around her, and as if he were cradling her entire eyeball in his palm. She leaned heavily against him, unable to stand alone. There we go. He dabbed her tears softly with the inside of his silk sleeves. Shiver ran down her back as his cool palm gazed her cheek. Fragrance filled the air. Huh. Gentle as a kitten, he nozzled his throat, breathing her in. Come to me soon. That was as much as Allie could remember. Alright, so this is the different part. That part was the same. There they are. The sight of attendants on the pathway interrupted the vague, ominous feeling, eating Nazana up as he stood waiting for the nice closed ritual to be declared over. Arhitagami, could I have a word with you? What do you think you're doing, Nazana? Suspicion darkened Hadoka's face. He went to step between Nazana and Arhitagami, but Arhitagami stopped him. Nazna took the gesture as a permission to speak and bowed before opening his mouth. Uh, about Aoi, she's not getting better, is she? Nazna. The medicine you gave, give out in the close ritual is supposed to slow the calamity's progression. But even though she's been participating in it, isn't she only getting worse? Nazna forgot that he was keeping his gaze lowered out of respect and glanced up. Grim unease washed through him. Arahitagami's eyes, usually a rainbow of colors, were as dark as Nazana, now found the village. Were as dark as Nazana, now found the village. And you want me to save her? Haven't I been saving her this whole time? A broad smile crept over Arahitagami's face. Nazana's strange disquietude grew stronger. What? No one moved a muscle, but the earth beneath Nazna bucked like a flick blanket. I thought no one in your family ever gave me trouble. any trouble. Nazna was on his knees, unclear what had just happened. Our hero Tagami crouched beside him. But you're a bit different, aren't you? I hate that color of yours. A missing feral growl pur purred from our hero Tagami's throat as he melted away into the darkness. Damn it. It felt like a dream. Aoi dimly noticed she was swaying through the air. She was being carried. Alright, let's save. Okay, what if I would have clicked it? Am I considering pursuing him? Let me speak with him. Never felt real. That's the same. I want to save. Quick save. I don't want to think about anything. Let me go. Although she didn't know for sure. Alright, let's see what happens. Where is it coming from? Oh god. It's him! The freaking dick demon thing. No. I don't want it.
certain beauty of them. Give me a different option. Seems like we got the same ending again. God dang it, damn it. Can I fucking win, dog? The hell? Let's try the other option here. Give me something. Ah, oh, damn. So close, but yeah, so far. Oh, God. You wouldn't understand. Yeah, or. Nasna just get fucked there? Oh wait, that's different. Oh shit, go back! Son of a dick! Son of a dick! <laughs> Something changed! <laughs> Something changed. Alright. Alright, so we read this. Let's see if there's something else now. What was with him just now? Wait a second, did I miss something again? No, oh, no, he didn't kill me, okay. Just remember the confrontation gave Nazanus. Nazna goosebumps. A droplet of cold sweat ran down his back. The encounter had felt like he'd once sneaked out on the to the mountains at night and feared wild wild beasts lurking in every shadow. There's something off about him. As the head priest's illegitimate son, Nazna wasn't privy to too much of what was went on on the shrine. No one talked to him about his family, the great mistletoe or Arhitagami. His brother dealt with shrine affairs, and Nazna was expected to leave home, which was fine by him. Excuse me. He planned to study abroad so he could find a cure for the floor calamity, as he didn't care about the ancient local customs, or rather he shouldn't. I wanted to know what's going on. What's his, what his family was embroiled in, exactly. I've already more or less left the village, so what harm could it do? I... Didn't he live amongst city and inhabitants with their new ideals? Ideas so di utterly different to those here? He did. So he could be the one to challenge Arahitagami. The discomfort of filling out a place at the shrine welled up in him stronger than bef ever before. The full moon's already this high. Arahitagami would be atop his planquin right now with the medicine he'd appealed to the gods to consecrate. Nazna could easily picture the plaque when passing through rows of orange glowing lanterns on its way to the sacred tree covered in talismans and strung with red cord. He'll be handing out blessed medicine there for a while so no one will be come back here in the meantime. Nazna strolled to the old warehouse, storehouse like he did all the time. It's our time baby we're gonna get a different ending maybe. The good ending hopefully. He stopped at the stoop of the, its heavy door. The key he'd lifted from the shrine manor, main shrine's main manor room fit smoothly into its lock. After pushing the door open, Nazna lit, lit the can, small candlestick he'd brought with him. His brother's penchant for order oozed out of the room's methodically arranged contents. 
and I also flip through some dog-eared books and scrolls on traditional herbs and Chinese medicine. They may have been thumbed through countless times. Must have been thumbed through countless times. Oh? Each document he leafed through gave him a sense of deja vu. Why? It's not like they're about the same topics. He took a few books and lined them up in a row, intrigued. Comparing their contents, he realized what the oddity was. They're all in the same handwriting. Such a vast library of materials, all written by one person, it was infeasible. Every book Nazna took down to check showed the same thing. This one too. His apprehension grew with each new volume he saw, and this one, and this? What's that? His hand brushed something cold, cool and hard. It was out of sight, stuffed at the back of the shelf. He prized it free and carefully lifted it down. A small lacquered box. What's inside? He took out a bound notebook. Nothing was written on its cover, but it felt especially old and delicate. First page wrote, Account by the head of the first generation. This was one was written by someone else. Battling an awful sense of foreboding, Nasno gingerly turned the page. Turn the page. October 9th. I came across... 19th. I came across a strange plant on the mountainside, entwined with a tree's thin branches to form a sort of woven basket. A purple bud is nested in, its, in the contraption, and though it is yet to bloom, it already has a strong scent. I shall keep an eye on it. Incredible news. When the bud bloomed, I saw it contained a baby, a boy. It sounds mad. Indeed, it is like a dream. I'm, in writing this, I hope to confirm t to myself it's... It is really happening. My wife is holding him now. Is he a child of the gods? Were we chosen? He is no ordinary child. He looks like a jewel and will surely grow up to be magnificent. He's extraordinarily interested in the feather on shuttlecocks. We have named him Oh, He will not drink the milk we got from someone nearby. Instead, he sucks on the flower from which he was born. I wonder if we could provide enough sustenance for him. His wife cleverly devised a delicious smelling milk substitute for him made of honey which he has taken to. Truly a beggar's belief. He has grown rapidly though, not yet a year old. He looks like a child of ten. As predicted, he is an intelligent and handsome boy. Our windfall gifted us by the mountain gods. He often goes out walking alone during the dead of night. I wonder why. There are wild dogs around here. I have explained to him clearly why he must stay in. I shall try to follow him once. I lost sight of him. How he walks on a dark animal trail without getting lost, nor leaving a trace, I don't know. During the day, I come across a tree that birthed him. Now enormously grown, now grown enormously tall. I believe it is a wisteria, but it was in bloom, although it is in spring. Is that what it, where he goes at night? Come to think of it, he gives off a mild flowery scent himself. He is here now, just sitting beside me. Though he is doing no more than that, he is as pretty as a picture. His skin is personal and pale, and is present presently dappled with sunlight, glittering through gently swaying leaves. His eyes are luminescent as imported glass. Is he truly of this world? I'm in pain. My chest hurts. Whenever I look at him, an unbearable pain ache seeks my, seizes my heart. His stare is too piercing. His pale skin too heartrending. The stormy passions he arouses burn within me. Things continue as they are. I fear I may end up losing him. Oh, what am I doing? Is my yearning adoration the love of a father or I, I... It's seduction itself, every gesture, every move he makes tempts me. You're a rapist. I... Just the scent of his sweat. It's a floral aroma. The more I feel of his skin, the more I wish to feel and to push deeper inside. It, it, this is getting gross. Every touch tests my willpower severely. He is a fruit of heaven designed to lead a man astray. The worst has come to pass. I have made a grave mistake. I cannot believe myself. I, against my better judgment, I, no matter what I say, nor how badly I treat him, he remains utterly indifferent. Why did he come here? For what reason does he toy with people? Certainly not for my sake. I can't even get angry at him anymore. Though we speak to one another, it is as our words have lost all meaning. Even when confronted with death, all he seems to comprehend is that somebody else has died. Perhaps he views me 
too as merely somebody else. A strange growth like grass and moss has broken out on the body of a young man in the village. It wouldn't have, I wouldn't have believed it had I not seen it myself. Pulling on it seems painful. It, is truly, it truly is a part of him. Now that some days have passed, the foul odor it emits has spread far and wide. It is far from flowering grass now and it has become a vile, half-melted slime. The youth mumbles incoherently, consumed by the mountain god's anger, weeping. Without so much as a pause for breath, this evil plague has swept through the throughout the village, plunging at us into dark despair. It has not affected him. Where would it appear on that body of his? I fear what news I hear, yet I must listen. My eyes have pained me lately. Perhaps I am overtired. This is that grass growing out of my eyes. It's him. He is the cause of this, because he is a forbidden fruit. I cannot help but suspect this ailment is a curse or a punishment, as he brought it, it as himself, thus consciously betraying me. If so, it matters not. I lust for him insatiably. I can scarcely believe it. The spouting stems of that awful grass have fallen off. Is he himself the cure of this horrendous deed I have committed? As long as we care for the God's child, for the God's child in this house, the fruit will stay mine. Ah, ow, it hurts. Why again? Ah, am I to perish to die? This is, after all, so wretchedly tired. Can't think straight. A living God. Why am I no good? Ah, I want to go to the flowers. That was awful. That dude's ah, uh, awful. What is this? Was this diary true? This folktale-like story was real? Deaf to logic, Nazna's heartbeat out of control. I have to tell Owie. What are you doing in here? Nazna snapped the book shut and whipped around. Uh, Arahitagami. Isn't the festival still going on? Despite his snow-white kimono, kimono, Arahitagami seems to exude shade. He seems indistinct somehow, not quite tactile. What are you? Are you human or not? What's that? Ignoring the question, Arihitagami's gaze shifted to the book Nazda held. The flame of the candlestick in Nazda's other hand shone in his eyes. Nazda had always found those eyes of his pretty, but instead of their usual colors, they now harbored something that filled him with nasty dread. It's the first generation's diary. People sure like to squirrel things away. You. What would you know? What do you plan to do with Aoi? Arahitagami stood silently, indifferent to Nazna's passionate outburst. I'll tell you what I know. He tilted his head half an inch, his brow furring slightly. I killed you. You just die. What? Oh, fuck. No! A massive impact has struck Nazna, hollowing out his abdomen. He was already on the ground before any pain hit him. What the hell was that? It sounded like a slow leak of air filled his ears. He couldn't tell where it was coming from. It's dark. The candle he dropped must have gone out. The dim storeroom grew blurry. He couldn't sense air he took on me close by or, nor anyone else. The taste of rusty iron cane coated his tongue. Warm liquid dribbled from his lips. Getting colder. Owie. He had to warn her. Run away. He had to tell her. I don't think we're getting the good ending. I think that's a bad ending. Probably a bad ending. Damn it! What is the good ending? What do I need to do to get the good ending? Nasa's nowhere around. Maybe he went back to the city. How we had searched for Nasna after the festival, but was unable to find him anywhere. The staff of the shrine said they hadn't seen him either. He didn't say anything about, to me about leaving. Did something urgent come up? Why would, when would she get the opportunity to see him again? Disappointed, she began tidying the room when floorboards creaked 
in the hallway outside her door. Hmm? Who could that be? Are you in there, Aoi? Our Hitogami, just give me a second. She hurriedly straightened herself up and opened the door. Wait. It was clearly our Hitogami who was standing there in front of her. The setting sun lit from behind, dyeing his white kimono a soft, dusky shade of gold. Why? But for some reason, instead of his usual scent, he smelled like Nazna. Damn it! Damn it! Mimic. Alright, so what we need to do is... Alright guys, I can't find the last ending. I don't know how to get to the happy ending, but... Whatever, it was a pretty good game. Uh, it was pretty interesting. I don't know how you get to the part. I assume you have to do something where um, your childhood friend discovers it, but he survives. I don't know how to make that happen, but thanks for all watching as always, guys. If you like videos like these, please like and subscribe. Bye!